This is a story of the old Northwest Territories of Canada, of the earliest days of the Northwest Mounted Police. The year was 1876. The force was only three years old. And in scattered posts from Edmonton to Fort Calgary to Fort McLeod, from Battleford to Maple Creek to Fort Walsh, we were trying to bring the law and keep the peace throughout thousands of square miles of Indian country. The great lone land it's been called, land of prairies and lakes and mountains, beautiful, peaceful. But in those days, it was a powder keg. The savage tribes of plain and mountain were ready to explode into bloody war. To prevent that was our job. There were only 300 of us then in the Northwest Mounted. I was a relative newcomer, Constable Duncan MacDonald at your service. Enlisted in Toronto, applied for duty in the far west and was sent to join Troop B at Fort Walsh in Saskatchewan, close by the Montana line. We prepared for trouble. South of the boundary, the Sioux and the American cavalry, called long knives by the Indians because of their sabers, were fighting bloody skirmishes. And our own warlike Canadian tribes were restless. I'm going to tell you the story of a patrol I made. I will tell it to you exactly as it happened, with the exception that when the Cree Indians speak, they will speak in our language. Many miles to the south of Fort Walsh, Standing Bear's tribe of Canadian Crees had illegally slipped across the boundary line into the United States to hunt buffalo. Standing Bear, chief of all the Crees, was pleased. The lodges were red with meat and his people had forgotten the starvation days of the past winter. But Standing Bear's joy was short-lived. Who did this? American Long Knives, looking for Sioux. They don't know the difference between Cree and Sioux. We will teach them the difference. to mourn the souls of their dead, to lament their defeat, and Standing Bear and his chiefs were troubled.
from our friends, the Assiniboines. Long knives coming. Horse soldiers. Thunder guns. We must go north. Back to the country of the Great White Mother. Here there are many buffalo. Here the hunting is good. Kona says fight the long knives. We cannot. The long knives are as many as the pine needles of summer. We must go north swiftly. For what? To starve? It is our right to hunt where we like. Will you let the long knives drive you back to a land of hunger? Kona says fight! No. No. You're all woman hearts. Even Standing Bear. Kona has spoken. Standing Bear is not afraid to fight and to die. There is no glory in running from an enemy. Only Standing Bear is the chief of all his people. He must think of the women and children who will be left without husbands and fathers. This is his duty. We will not fight. We will go north. Standing Bear has spoken. The hearts of the Long Knives are soft with love for their own people. Assemble your best warriors, find some white people and take captives. If the Long Knives attack us before we can cross the medicine line, we will use the captives to trade for peace. Listen! Listen to Kona! A raid is to be made! Kona asks for warriors to ride with him! Break camp! Break camp! everybody. Spot over there. Plenty of water. Build our cabin on that rise. Corrals below.
take the two alive. Use fire arrows. Across the medicine line to see the new pony soldiers at Fort Walsh. This evil that has happened to these ranchers may be good fortune for us. You will not return with a second wife, my husband. You forget my father was a white man. It is not the custom of his people to take more than one wife. Have no worry. You're enough wife for me, small face. At ease. I caught up with the horse thief and followed him into the Sawtooth Mountains. On the morning of the third day... Hello, Natayo Smith. I'm busy just now. I said I'm busy, Natayo. Come back in ten minutes. Did you hear me tell you I'm busy? Two times. Me, I'm not busy. Got plenty of time. I wait. Go on, McDonald. On the morning of the third day, I saw my man stopping at a deserted cabin. He still had the stolen horse with him? Yes, sir. As I got near the cabin, he opened fire. One of his shots hit my mount and went down, pinning me under him. This gave my man a chance to get away. You can put the details in your report. How did you finally make the arrest? I didn't, sir. You didn't? Oh, no, sir. By the time I got to the nearest farm where I could buy another horse, my man had about a nine-hour head start. I figured that before I could catch up with him, he'd be across the American border. You figured that out, did you? Yes, sir. What's the border got to do with it? Well, sir, rules and regulations, Article 33 states that members of the force are not permitted to enter the United States. So actually, you were only obeying the rules and regulations. Yes, sir. How long have you been with the force, McDonald? About a year and a half, sir. Most of it was desk duty in Toronto, is that right? Yes, sir. You want to go back to that desk? Oh, no, sir. I, I like this duty. Then like it hard. Get the fancy notion that this is a life of gentlemanly adventure out of your head. It's exactly what they told you to be when you took your oath. You get paid 75 cents a day to carry the law where there is none. This was your first patrol, Constable. And you haven't earned your pay. Yes, sir. Now sit down over there and make out your report in quintuplicate. That's Article 85. What can I do for you, Natal? This is so strange when man comes to see his friend. Oh, a friendly visit. And how much will this visit cost Her Majesty? What is interesting to one man may not be interesting to his friend. Your information is always interesting, Natal. Thank you for pleasing opinion and high regard. Much snow in mountains. Very interesting. I have been in the United States. I know. Pony soldier chief knows much. Thank you for your pleasing opinion and high regard. Now, what did you see in the States? I see many different Indians, even Crees of Standing Bear. You have news of the Crees? Does my friend find this interesting? Get to the point, Natalia. What's your price? My rifle. Don't shoot good. Much lead in barrel. All right, you'll get a new rifle. Pony soldier rifle, Enfield. Shoot many bullets. Yeah, news had better be worthwhile. Enfield rifles are expensive. Also, last winter, much cold. 
two Hudson's Bay blankets. Two blankets. Get to the news. Also, in matter of my woman, she needs new cooking pot. Cooking pot. Of copper. Of copper. Of size to hold two buffalo tongues. All right, all right. Also... That's all, Natalia. A rifle, two blankets, a copper pot. Standing Bear's Crees have left their reserve. We know that. We've been looking for them. Is that your news? Now, calm your heart. They fought with American long knives. In Canyon of Red Rocks, they were cut to pieces. How do you know this? Seven, eight Crees raid American homestead party in Black River. They take captives alive, too. Live captives? That's unusual. Hostages, probably. I, Natayo, saw this. These seven or eight Crees, where were they headed? The Cinnaboyne Trail going north. You will give me a piece of paper for things you promised me? Just a moment. McDonald? Yes, sir. How good were you at training school in the Cree language? Well, I passed the course, sir. You heard what natayo has been saying? Yes, sir. I want those captives released and the Crees escorted back to their reserve. It's your patrol. Natayo? No, 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 you no. You know the Yosini Boyne Trail like the back of your hand. I'd like you to go with Constable McDonald. Scout for him. No, no, no. My plans look in other directions. You'll be paid well, Natayo. Oh, ask Natayo to make bed in nest of rattlers. Ask him to put hand in grizzly's mouth. Ask him to walk barefooted through blizzard. This he will do. But go with this, this, this fine tender feet pony soldier. No. I can't force you to do this, Natayo. Sir, one of our duties is that of customs inspection, is it not? Oh, Mr. Natayo Smith has just come from the States. As a matter of routine, wouldn't it be advisable just to uh, examine his par flesh? Perhaps it would, Constable. Perhaps it would. surprised at you, Mr. Smith. A former scout of the mounted police. You know liquor is outlawed in the Northwest Territories. I came in a hurry. It's possible to forget when mind is crowded. Mr. Smith, for smuggling liquor into the Northwest Territories, your fine is one Enfield repeating rifle, two Hudson Bay blankets, one copper pot, and one copper pot. The wisdom of Inspector Fraser is more greater than that of Natayo. Also, the tender feet has sharp ears of Mukasis the fox. I will go away now. Just a moment. I haven't finished. In addition, as part of your fine, you will cut and stack 20 cords of wood for this post. Oh! On the other hand, accompany Constable McDonald on this patrol. No wood chopping, and you get the things I promised. For this one to cut 20 cord of wood is to die 20 times. Also, to go with this tender feet is to die more faster. I go. Good. The Pony Soldier Chief knows this patrol is much, much dangerous. All right, Natayo, I won't force you to go. McDonald will go alone. Uh, perhaps I could go if... Not a thing more, Natayo. You've been well paid. No, it is no more of things that I talk. It is of my life. The Crees do not love the Blackfeet. Because I am half Blackfeet, half white man, they do not love me double. Maybe you would give me red coat to wear. So they will think two times before they take my scalp. Well, this is a small post, Natal. We don't have any extra tunics here. It's not red coat. Feel more better about the things you promised. When you get back. If I don't get back, if I am killed. We'll see that your widow gets them. My widow? I need flag, too, like real pony soldier. All right. Good luck, McDonald. Good luck to both of you. And so we rode northeast, trying to cut the trail of that raiding party of seven or eight Crees and the two captives. 
We found traces of many war and scouting parties, but never saw a living soul. Natayo would point out moccasin tracks and grunt, Sioux, Assiniboine, Blackfoot. Never a sign of a Cree. Natayo may have been a schemer, but he was a scout who certainly knew his way around in the bush. It was seldom that anything baffled him. Until one day. What's the matter? Since I was boy, I have known this place like skin on my nose. There is no lake here, yet here is a lake. I don't see any lake. You have sharp fox ears, but white man's eyes. Come, here. Observe. Oh, it's a mirage. A me. A mirage. An illusion. Right over here. Now you observe. It's gone. Oh, wait, Natayo. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a, a trick of nature caused by the heat under certain conditions. I have seen this same thing one or two times before. Is the evil spirit making bad medicine? No, Natayo. Now listen. That lake exists somewhere. It's real. And so are the trees. But because of the heat, the light rays are bent. The sky becomes a giant mirror. So we look here and see a reflection of something that's really over... over here. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a... a phenomenon. Phenomenon? That's right. Who makes this phenomenon? Well, God. Or, as you say, Gichimanito. That's what Natayo says. He's the evil spirit. Come, we go back. No, Natayo. You made a bargain with Inspector Fraser. Pony soldier has spoken. By now, I had begun to feel that the Cree raiding party had completely given us the slip. And then... Do not move. I will not point. Look where I say. Observe bushes ahead. Man hiding their war scout. See him? Nobody there. Big bush to right. See tips of eagle feathers. No eagle feathers. Wait here. Crees. They are cautious as moose when ice is thin. They wish to make sure that we are not American long knives. Thanks to Great Spirit, we wear red coats. Well, if they're where you say they are, what are we standing out here in the open for? Please, Pony Soldier, do not move. Do not say anything. Please. I will speak. Oh, Crees. Oh, famous fighters of the North. Oh, dogs and eaters of dogs. Listen to me, Natayo, the bobcat. I bring Pony Soldier from Great White Queen. He comes as friend, seeking beautiful children of Queen Mother, the Crees. Do not skulk and hide from him. Natayo has spoken, Natayo the Bobcat. This was a larger party than we were searching for. There were more than eight of them. 
They hadn't traveled far. They had no food with them. And there was no sign of the American captives. Well, when we topped the ridge and I saw what was below in the valley, my heart went down to a rock bottom. We'd ridden full tilt into a trap. You told Inspector Fraser Standing Bear's crease were cut to pieces. The Tayo made big mistake. Sometimes even when smart beaver cut down three, three, four lot beaver. Kona, war chief and leader of the dog soldiers, will give a pony to a poor man. For I bring in a captive, a red coat pony soldier. I have heard of the pony soldiers. You are the first I have seen. Speak. That you dismount is courteous. Standing Bear said, speak. The great white queen is angry. Her children, the Crees, have left their reserve. We are a free people. These are the lands where we were born where we have hunted for a hundred snows. Leave us, pony soldier. Take this fat half-blood and leave our camp. Go, pony soldier, but have no fear. My young men will not follow. We do not even desire your scalps. Come, Constable Mac, we go. Standing Bear, before I leave, I ask a council smoke with you. There is no need for a council smoke. Go. Against the wishes of the great white mother, you have led your people into the land of the Long Knives. Your warriors fought them in the canyon of the Red Rocks. And another wrong you have done. You have taken two captives from the country of the Long Knives. The pony soldier speaks with the tongue of the snake that rattles. It is standing bear who speaks with a forked tongue. I will deal with him. Stand aside. I said stand aside. No! You can't pray. No, no time to talk. I'm taking you before their chief. Don't say anything or do anything. Just follow me.
is living proof that Standing Bear speaks with a forked tongue. The prisoners are conus. By what medicine did the pony soldier know of these captives and where they were hidden? The pony soldiers of the Queen have powerful medicine. Now, once again, I ask for a council smoke. I will consider. I will consult my chiefs. Kona, take the slaves back. They are still yours. Only let no harm come to them. <laughs> await our answer. You are at liberty to speak to the captives, but do not move outside the camp circle. Thank you. Provide the two of them with shelter. Come. Many years this one have observed rabbits, antelope, men do foolish things, but you, Constable Mac, do most foolishest. You come into camp of thousand Crees like army. You call Big Chief Liar before all his people. You take prisoners from their hands, but more worse of all, you have chance to go with your own scalp, and you stay. Why you try so hard to die? Article 22, remember? We've got a bear by the tail. The tail of bear is always short. You go with him and set up camp. I'm going to talk to the prisoners. This one would like to go you with you. You go with him. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's no use, Natayo. Pony soldier have spoken. Jess, that soldier, you don't seem glad he's here. Jess. Yeah? He said he was a pony soldier of the Queen. Then he must be in the Canadian Army. The police. Well, what's the difference? It shows there's law around here. Yeah. But doesn't it? Yeah. I don't understand you. Some food. I brought you some bannock and jerk venison. Isn't very fancy, but it helps keep the stomach full. Thank you. This is good. Anything tastes good after the scraps and filth they've been feeding us. Jess said you're a, a Canadian police officer. I'm a constable in the Northwest Mounted Police. We've not been organized very long. There aren't too many of us. You must have been in Canada recently. No, no, never been up here before. Just heard about your outfit. Do you think the chief will let us go? If you'll agree to a council smoke, there's a good chance. Good chance? Everybody talks like that, don't know Indians. You got a better idea? Sure. I may have that Enfield rifle of yours. As soon as it gets dark, we we'll grab a couple of horses and light out. You wouldn't even get outside the camp. I'd just as soon go down fighting the Red Devils as have them torture me to death. I can't help wondering why you've come here all alone. I'm not exactly alone. I have a scout with me. And you think all you got to do to get them in and to do what you say is just go out there and talk with them? I have no other choice except to get them to talk. Talk with an Indian? Look, take it from me, from Jess Calhoun. The only talk an Indian understands is hot lead in his belly. The Indian figures that's the only language the white man understands. And right now, there are about a thousand of them out there who are thinking just that way. We appreciate you trying to help us. Really, we do. You two related? You married? No. Jess worked for my father. He joined up with us about a month ago. Whereabouts? Wyoming. Why? No particular reason. Just asking. As soon as we set up camp, I'll bring you some pemmican stew and fresh bannocks. Thank you. We're all walking on pretty thin ice. Now keep your mind off that end field. Keep your shirt on. Keep your shirt on. I just don't understand you, Jess. You ain't required to. There's a chance I could. I'm going to hightail out of here. Everything all right? 
Say, Natayo, that red-haired captive claims he's never been in Canada before, yet he seems to know all about us and our infield rifles. Have you ever seen him? Sure, when they raid the wagon. No, no, before that. It's possible. Well, did you or didn't you? I'm quite sure. That you did or you didn't? I see him. When? Where? I try to remember. Oh, no. There's another rifle in it for you, if you do. This helped me remember much. Uh, no. Natayo, there's always the matter of that second bottle of rum. This helped me remember much better. Maybe soon, now my mind crowded. Ogichi Manito, answer for your children this problem. A red-coat pony soldier has come among us. His medicine is powerful. His medicine told him we fought the Long Knives in their country. His medicine told him we took two captives. His medicine directed his steps to the lodge of the captives. Shall we offer him the sacred pipe? Oh, show to us your answer. Ogichi Manito. these councils go on? Indian never have small ceremony. All ceremony must be big. Oh, no. No, no, Natayo. We don't raise the flag at night. We fly it only in the daytime. It's good rule for pony soldier camp. In Cree camp, we fly flag day and night. I felt the same way about the flag, too, but I didn't have the frankness to say so. The waiting was the hard thing, the absence of action. We just had to sit there in that hornet's nest and wait for the decision of a council of savages. Then I saw a boy watching us, a little Cree. His look was friendly, his eyes trusting. After all the hatred and screeching, his presence was like a fresh breeze. My second son is of his years. Ah, uh, that I might see him again. You will, Natayo. As soon as we finish this patrol. That means never. In this matter, both sides of this one agree.
gift requires gift of equal value is old custom. Whistle made from wing bone of eagle. What's your name? Orphan boy. Since the Blackfeet kill my family. Blackfeet murderers. Some have given me another name. Comes running. Comes running? Yes. When there's food in someone's lodge, they always say this one comes running. Only now there's little food for anyone. Come. Eat in our lodge. Since the red coat has my eagle whistle, and I have his white medal. We are brothers. We are brothers. Natayo, some food for our brother. Now everybody brothers. Tayo's head not in hat. Everybody in camp say, why have you come, pony soldier? To make peace between my people and the Cree people. Everybody say Pony Soldier very brave to come here. My friend Natayo had something to do with that. When Cree gives praise, close your ears. He asked for something. I comes running, I'm also brave. I can herd horses, I can hunt, ride, and dance. Hey -oh, no, hey -yo, hey -yo, hey -yo. When Cree prays himself, watch out. He will wear your eye teeth on his necklace. The pony soldier says he comes to make peace. When peace is made, it's the custom for warriors of one tribe to choose sons from the other. This makes the peace strong. That's a good, sensible idea. There you see, Constable Mac, what Natalia tell you. You don't watch out. You find yourself papa to little Cree puppy. This one. Listen, all listen. It is Awaskas, the elk who cries the camp. Observe the fine pony that he rides. Kona gave it to him to tell the people of his young brother, Shamokan. Kona gave him the owner, Chani Awakan, for a wife. You sit there chewing while this listen. goes on. Oh, listen. Somebody's getting married. None of our business. Tell the pony soldier what owner Chani Awakun mean. Slave woman. That's what we call a captured white girl. There's he will marry the white girl, Shimogan, brother of Kona. Now Kona has drawn knife against you. It's like sending arrow. It's message of war. That's true, pony soldier. There'll be tangled trouble. decision of the Medicine Council. You will go, Redcoat, and take the fat Blackfeet with you. Go out of our camp and away from our hunting lands. 
And the prisoners? They were taken in war. They remain, as is our law. My people say for me to keep you. They want your blood. I give you mercy. Go quickly. The warriors will not start after you till the sun is half through the afternoon. <laughs> was the answer. It was final. I'd done all I could, and I'd lost, in spite of Fraser and my bluffing and everything else. This was the showdown. It looked as if that red-headed captive, that tough Indian hater Calhoun, was right. He said it was no use trying to talk to Indians. Well, the chief wasn't playing games. He'd given us a few hours head start. It was high time to think of our own lives before it was too late. Pony soldier, I'll go with you. I'm afraid not this time, son. A son's place is by his father's side. Twice I have seen pictures in the sky, but I have never seen anything like this. It walks on the water. Is the sign good or bad? It is strange to Christine. It must be an ill omen. Does anyone know? The pony soldier knows. the medicine of the great white queen. Look at it. It is the great water to the east. The big smoke canoe was built by my people. It fills its belly with fire and walks across the water. The queen mother has more of these monsters than the Crees have horses. Does this smoke canoe walk on the prairies too? No. It lives in the water. But we have others that eat fire and walk on wheels. They will come soon to this land. This is the medicine of the great white queen. It is a sign from her that the council decided wrong. It is a warning that you must hear me. soldier. The medicine of your queen is powerful. We will grant you a counsel. Standing Bear has decided wisely. When? When the sun is at the peak of its teepee. Counsel would be the proper time. For what? To ask permission and I become your son. Yes, yes, I guess it would. We'll see. We pledge every man here to speak truly and as his heart feels. Pass to left. Bold must point to chief.
Let the pony soldier say why he has come among us. The heart of the great white queen is heavy with sorrow. Her children, the Cree people, have disobeyed her. They have left their reserve. They have fought with the long knives. One of the Cree war parties stole two captives. When the lodges are empty of food and the women grow weak and the children cry, what man who is a man will not hunt where he wills? The long knives drove us from the land of buffalo. Now the hunters come back with snakes and prairie dogs. These my people are eating. The Crees, the fit people, are starving. That is why the Crees must return to their reserve. The pony soldier promises to bring the law and keep the peace. The pony soldier promises that that law shall be the same for all the children of the queen. For red men and white men alike. Further, he promises food. When you march, he will arrange for a wagon train to meet you. There will be tea and flour and beans and beef and bacon. This is the first command of the great queen. The Crees must return to their reserve. Second, the two white captives must go unharmed and free. The marriage of Kona's brother to the white girl is forbidden. Kona will speak. I captured the prisoners in a raid. They belong to me. This is the law of the Cree people. If the pony soldier tries to take them, he is breaking the Cree law. The Queen's law says that no one shall be the slave of another. The white girl I've promised to my younger brother Shemogan for a wife. The marriage will take place. The other prisoner the pony soldier can have. But if the pony soldier tries to steal the white woman, I will cut out his heart and dry his scalp behind my lodge. Kona has spoken. There will be no marriage. The prisoners will go unharmed and free. The pony soldier has spoken. The council will decide. Agree to return to the reserve? Agreed. 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 So it is agreed. We will march. But if it happens, the pony soldier speaks with a forked tongue. He will answer to the law of the Crees. Kona does not agree. The council has decided. <laughs> How does this change our agreement? I am chief of all the Crees. The word of Standing Bear is as strong as stone and as true as water. The captives will not be harmed, and my people will march tomorrow. It is a treaty between us. It is a treaty between us. Did the pony soldier talk to the chiefs? Yes. How did they say? Well, they were agreeable. And I'm your son. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't ask about that. There were other things to talk about, more important things. More important? Well, not more important, perhaps, but more, more urgent. We must be patient. You do not want me for a son? Now, look. This is a matter just between us. We don't have to ask anyone's permission. I made a peace with your people. Let's us make the peace strong. From now on, you're my son. The whole camp must know. It is fitting that someone should cry the camp. We'll find someone. It is also fitting. Yes? The son of a pony soldier must wear an eagle's feather, and he cannot go about on foot. Oh, true. True, a pony soldier's son must wear an eagle's feather and he must ride. I know where there's a fine pinno. He runs like an antelope. Let's go look at him. 
soldier has given him a knife and some cloth to tell the people that he takes the boy Hewat Kawasis the orphan for his son. Here Waska Seal? He's talking about me. The whole camp knows that you're my father and I'm your son. I am now somebody. It's important that I have a new name. Highly important. Oh. I will give you my name. Duncan. Duncan comes running MacDonald. Duncan. Duncan. It is nice. What animal does it mean? Well, it, uh, it does mean an animal. In my father's language, Gaelic, it means brown warrior. Duncan. Brown warrior. I must tell everybody. You smart, Constable Mac. You no more tender feet. Adopting little Cree boy till you bring them back to reserve. Good trick. No trick. I mean it. You mean it. Do you not know that little rattlesnake grows into Never beat? Never mind. I want you to ride to our post at Maple Creek ahead of us. You mean now? Right now I am free to leave? Yes. But wait. Wait till I tell you what to do. When you get there, load 25 Red River carts. With pemmican, beef, tea, flour, potatoes. Oh, it's more work. Then drive west. Meet the tribe as we go north. All right, 25 Red River carts. I will cut your trail somewhere between Maple Creek and Many Islands Lake. But there may be great danger. This one may not get through. War parties are out. The Many standing hunters... Standing Bear has ordered that you be given safe conduct. But Constable Mac, Natayo still one half black feet, one half... All right, Natayo, how much? Not much. Fine buffalo pony and... Agreed, a fine buffalo pony. And... This one must hurry. Goodbye, Constable Mac. Just a moment. About that red-haired captive. Is your mind still crowded? More or less. More or less? Less. Before I say, you must promise two things. Go on. One, you will forget for all time that second bottle of rum. And two? You will let me keep for all time this red coat? Agreed. He is escaped prisoner from Winnipeg jail. How do you know this? Before pony soldiers come to Fort Walsh, this one make little, very little mistake and have to spend six months in this jail. There I see this captive. His name is Johnny Pierce. He is escaped bank robber. Johnny Pierce? Yes. Why didn't you tell me this before? I did not wish Pony Soldier to tell Inspector Fraser of my mistake. There's no need to worry, Natayo. You won't tell him? He already knows. Oh, Pony Soldiers know everything. I must go now. Good luck. Natayo will need good luck. I am Shemorgan, brother of Kona. In the morning, I will come for you. What do you mean? How do I know? The Ani Chaniawakan is to be my wife. Standing Bear and the Council have decided otherwise. At the rising of the sun, Shemorgan will come for you. Shemorgan will bring five ponies as a sign of his love. Standing Bear has promised that you'll not be harmed. And that we march tomorrow. He's given his word. His word, huh? We made a peace with the chief, and we're going to give him a chance to live up to it. So far, he's shown good faith. 
You're not bound or gagged. There's no guard out there. Why don't you stop talking like a prairie lawyer and start acting like a man? Now, listen to me, Calhoun, and listen carefully. This is the last time I'm going to talk to you. I'm putting you on warning. Don't you make one wrong move. I'm obliged to you for everything you've done. Well, we get paid for this, ma'am. 75 cents a day. Don't worry. We'll march tomorrow. Do you want to help me, Duncan comes running? Yes, of course. Go stay with the white girl. If anyone tries to harm her, come and warn me. Don't worry, Ona Chani Awakam. The pony soldier sent me to protect you. This man has killed your brother, but you've no right to punish him. Only the great queen's law can punish him, and I assure you that it will. He is killed. Let him be killed! <laughs>
This prisoner must not be harmed. <laughs> Hear me! The pony soldier promises the same law for white man and Indian alike. And I have given my word that we follow this law. The pony soldier promises this killer will be punished. I will pledge my honor that he speaks the truth. Here is my shield of office. I will surrender it and step down if the pony soldier speaks with a forked tongue. The Cree law is to kill him. Kill him now! <laughs> Very well. The people do not trust Standing Bear. The people do not regard his honor as of any worth. You have chosen. I surrender the eagle's wing. You like Kona's way. Let Kona be your chief. No. I... White Moon have sat in council and listened to many. The pony soldier speaks with a straight tongue. Standing Bear speaks in wisdom. Let Standing Bear remain our chief. <laughs> now go to your lodges in peace. Stupid idiot. I'd have let them tear you apart, except for the pleasure I'm going to get out of taking you back and turning you in. For killing an Indian? For killing a man. Johnny Pierce. My prisoner. He will stand trial before the Queen's law for killing Shemorgan. Look after his wounds and place him under close guard. You will do as the pony soldier requests. The prisoner is in your keeping. Oh. Uh. I offer you my gratitude and thanks. When a man gives his word, duties go with it. But it would not be proper to ask my people to march today. A chief's brother's been killed. In three days, we march. That's good enough for me. Come, we will get our horses and ride side by side as brothers. Tony Soldier's father! Don't worry, we march in three days. soldier father riding with the chief. Your father? Of course, he adopted me. You should be. and his followers. I must go too, Pony Soldier Father. You have chosen a brave son, but you are much too young in years. You will go back to camp. Come, I'll see you back in camp.
horses have gone this way. One that way. It may be a trick. You go there. I'll go this way. Come out of there. I'll give you a count of three. One, two. What are you doing here? I almost shot you. I'm afraid for you. I don't want to be an orphan again. When a father speaks, a son obeys. I have my bow and arrows. Please let me help you. No, follow me. Now listen to me, comes running. Duncan I've... comes running. Duncan comes running. I want you to stay here. Keep your horse quiet and don't move. Do you understand? Yes, father. Enough. Miss White Squaw has brought evil days to us. I captured this Hornachani and the red coat came. Because of her, my brother was killed. She has brought bad medicine. We'll burn her. We'll destroy this bad medicine. The red coat will go away and we'll hunt and fight his free men again. <laughs>
chosen a brave son. And a brave warrior. O oh, Crees of the Northern Plains, O oh, my people, hear me. Your chiefs have smoked in council with a pony soldier. Your chiefs have taken his hand in friendship. We have agreed to follow the white man's road. Let us march. And so Constable MacDonald, single-handed, returned Standing Bear and his Crees to their reserve. It has been this same devotion to duty of many another on many a difficult patrol that, through three quarters of a century, has shaped and formed the living tradition and greatness of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police.